See those hogs? It doesn't matter, right? You hit him, knee him, knee him, hit him, hit him. Because you got, you got to watch out for these things. And then you hit him, right? Keep hitting him, and then hit him, and read the movement so that you can take the pain in the, in the back of the head. Like, you know, lock him up, knee him, hit him in the back of the head, elbow the back of the head, and then, you know, take the knife. Okay, I hit him, then hit him, hit him, and then, you know, worry about the knife. Hi, welcome to the Triessence Martial Art Channel. Today, I would like to talk a little bit about knife defense. Recently, I came across a video on the internet of certain Chinese grandmaster doing a seminar in Europe, and he was showing, you know, the Chinese knife defense which looks something like this uh, when the person step, let's use that hand so they can see the, uh, do this, do the vertical so you are showing like, when the person stabs you you first lean to the side you grab it and then you you, you just arm the person All right. and he was doing a seminar and everybody was pressing with him and I think that's a pretty irresponsible thing to do because those students believe in this grandmaster and they're gonna think this will work. And when they wanna get attacked by someone with a knife, they're gonna try to grab that knife and turn around. And chances are they might end up getting killed. It would be better if they didn't fight, right? The reason for that is because, first of all, nobody steps like this and stays there, okay? At least I've never seen anyone in real life stabbing somebody like you know, all out like that. Usually, they stab and come back. And when you stab and come back, you can't grab that hand or, you know, or sidestep and try to grab that hand. It's just not possible, all right? And even if you do grab that hand, hypothetically speaking, the next reaction of the person is gonna, yeah, it's gonna either come in or it's gonna fight with you, it's gonna tense up. So the chance of you being able to, to turn these hands around is gonna be different, right? It could be difficult. I don't think you're gonna say they work on this joint, to, to make it maximize pressure, but still, his other hand is, is free, right? Imagine the wind, you're, doing, you're gonna hit you in the head. Like a swing. Ah. So, from those, those few points, you can see how ineffective it is to try to grab somebody's knife, start over the hand, and then try to rotate it. Now, on the same regard, you know, I've seen some a keto knife defense where it's similar, you know, when a guy stabs, they want to go here and they want to pull it, similar idea, and then throw the person over. Once again, and if a guy is, for some strange reason, doing a dedicated stab, all stretched out, you're not going to be able to perform that technique. Even, once again, you, you hold his hand. And usually people stab you like this, right? So they, they, they're pretty well balanced. To actually pull him, it's going to be hard. Right? That is based upon expecting someone to momentum into the step, which, once again, doesn't happen in, in real life. Uh, step was the vertical one, right? Uh, the most classic one is to do this, and then you, know, you take over the knife. This technique, if you get in here, like if you're really locked up here, it will work. But the problem is, people don't, uh, once again, they don't go like this, they're going to be like, right, they're going to pull, pull back also, they're going to be stab, 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 stab. And when they're going to do that, you're not going to have that hand here. Or they're going to go here, and they're going to pull it down, right? So the chance for you to actually get a lock up here, it's not very much, it's not very good. He's going to back up, he's going to pull down. And from here, you can no longer apply this lock. And other examples would be techniques that might work, right? But I personally would think they're too risky to, to be used. Uh, for example, also in inverse, I've seen the one technique where they, uh, it's, I don't really know technique, but it looks like something like this, and then they come here and then they, they disarm the, the, the knife by 
by like hit, hitting against it, right? Or they get this hand on, on this side, probably like this, and then they apply the force so that you, you break, you put, you push the knife out of the guy's hand, something like like like, like that. I don't really know the technique, but uh, personally, I believe it's it might work. You know, when you train really well, but they are too risky, right? I don't want to gamble my life on some elaborate technique that's going to knock the guy's knife out. Sure, if you have 10, 20 years of experience and you're comfortable with it, it's fine, right? There's no one says you can't use it. But I think for the general public who's trying to learn knife defense to stay alive and don't have that much training behind them, technique like, like this is not as safe. So today I'd like to share a little idea of the knife approach I personally prefer, all right? Before I do that, I just want to state that you must keep in mind when you have empty hand against someone with a knife, you are always at a disadvantage. Okay? There are no training in the world that's gonna make you always superior to someone with a weapon. So what that means is do not expect that you'll always come on top. Okay? So when a situation like that arises, you need to first of all see can you get out of this situation? Can you escape? Can you talk yourself out? Can you call someone for help? And if not, can you get a weapon somewhere? Right? Do not have hand against knife as your first option. Because you will always be at a disadvantage. Okay? And because of that, self-defense knife techniques are not designed against professional knife trainers, right? Like the Filipino people or the military guys who know how to fight with a knife. That is very hard for common people to deal with empty-handed. And the chances are you are not going to encounter a professional knife fighter on the street who is trying to, 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 to kill you. So general knife defense that I'm talking about here are designed against normal people who doesn't train knife. They just got a knife and want to hurt, hurt you. All right? That's the scenario we're dealing with. The next thing to keep in mind is because you are at a disadvantage, keep, you must understand there is no fail-proof method, right? Method only works depending on the variables at play. You can't have one particular technique that you say it will always work and never fail. It's not going to happen, okay? Therefore, you must also have the mindset of expecting to get cut. Okay? Do not expect to walk out of a knife, hand versus knife, unscratched. It can happen, and you should try to strive to make it happen, but always have the mindset of expecting a few cuts here and there. As long as you don't get punctured in the main organs, right, or like in these vital places. If it's on the back here, on the side, it's all fine. It's, 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 it's acceptable damage. So keep that, that, that in mind, all right? Now I'm going to talk about how to, how for commoners, to defend knife. First thing you have to understand is the best option is to take his attention from the knife to himself. All right? If he's thinking about stabbing you, he will be efficient at it. But if you take his attention to the face, then he will have less control over the knife here. What this means is you should deal more with his face than with the knife. However, you have to deal with the knife first, right? Because it's going to come at you. If you don't deal with it, you'll get stabbed. So you have to block that knife. And instead of trying to grab it or try to control it, I prefer to simply just block it. And you can either block with the hand if you are conf confident, or block with the arm if you are not, because this covers a larger range. So in a typical downward strike, you can either block this way to take it out of your body, or block this way, right, to take it out of the body. Most important thing is, when you're blocking it at the same time, you've got to hit his head, right? That, that's very important. You want to, the moment you stop the knife from immediately endangering yourself, you want to take the tension here, so that his brain cannot focus on the knife attack. That first hand whatever is your base chance of surviving. Once that is established, even if he doesn't control his hand, his next strike will be slower. 
right? He will not be able to do this because his head just got hit and bashed. So each so next drive count will be slower, and then if you you know if on the, if on the same place or different place, you hit his head again. So every time you block him, you hit and you slow him down until a point where he's already kind of out of it. Then you finish him off either by hitting him really hard on the head or take the knife. Now because his head is hurt and he's dazed and stunned, it'll be much easier to take the knife rather than come with the knife immediately and then you know try to try to disarm it. And if he fights back, you know various things can happen. You cannot guarantee. So instead, or just hit him in the face, right? Or hit him in the face, he stands, then take a knife. Or even better, they hit him more until he drops. It sounds a bit brutal, but um, in my personal experience, it is safer for not so trained person to deal with a knife attack in that approach. I'm going to talk a bit about the punch, right? You don't want to have a, a, a one up punch. There's no time to hit him like that because knife comes very quick, right? It doesn't come one and allow you to take a big swing at, at, at him. That's not gonna happen. Also, you don't want to make a very light punch. You don't want to do like this. I mean, sure, it's not disrupt him, but without serious damage, it's still not safe for, for, for you, right? You want to do serious damage. So, the ideal punch in this situation is gonna be a punch similar to the, to the winter inch punch, where it's a small movement, but you generate a lot of force into the person. So let's say uh, there's a pad, so let's imagine this is the person's face, right? You don't want to have a very heavy hit, but you still don't want to hit somebody like this. Because that's, it's annoying and it's disruptive, but it's not enough damage. What you want to do is you want to block and hit him like that, right? See the, the displacement and the impact. Imagine that to be the guy's face. When he's not coming, you're going to hit him like this. And when he comes again, you can hit him again in the same manner. That's not a power you want to have. Uh, same with the palm strike, right? If this, this hurts and it's impact, but the palm can also penetrate power into the head. That once again will look something like this. So you want to have that kind of power on the person's head when you are hitting him. Very important. If you don't have that kind of power, it might not be very effective to hit him and just slow him down to stop him from continuing the, the attack alright now that is just the guideline approach that is what we wish to do okay in reality it might not play out as ideal right he might have you might not be prepared he might be fast and he's gonna stab you more time before you can hit him in the face uh, anything can happen in, in, in real life so when you train for it, you don't want to do with the very um, you know, conventional way where he stabs you once and you go oh, ha, and then you go with the you know, take down hit and then you finish off. It's, it's okay to do that in the beginning, but uh, you're going to go for more advanced training, that's not enough. Because chances are that time where that block is not enough and you forgot to, to hit him and it doesn't come again. All right? So it's important to, to, to practice a draw where you don't hit him for, for real in the face, obviously, because you want to hurt your training partner. And he just continuously stabbing you in all kinds of angles, right? He can repeatedly do one angle, and then he can do here and there, maybe try to slash you and do something else. And as random as possible, right? No patterns. And on the, on the, on the other end, you want to then learn to train your body to block these moves without really having to, to, to sing too much. And learn how to cut in and stop the attack. You want to go close by, like this, then it's harder for him to, to launch the attack at you. So then you, you know, then you find openings to hit him. All right. That's a very important part of training. If you don't do that, uh, you might never be ready for real uh, live knife defense. So I'm going to do a small demonstration of how it looks like. You're going to have to, you know, uh, can you go faster? See, notice how when there's a chance to grab him, you grab him. And when you do grab him, continuously hitting him, right? Forget about the knife. Here's the thing you're gonna be here. Even if he blocks, it doesn't matter, right? You hit him, knee, knee, hit, hit, hit him. Until he's facing out, facing out, then you grab the knife. Okay? 
But I only grabbed him once I've got the right opportunity. I don't want to grab him from the beginning, but that's in the midst. So in the beginning, you want to stop the knife from coming at you and try to, to, to hit him. And only when he slows down, or when you find a better connection, you feel the force, then you grab him. Right? So another very useful thing here is sensitivity training. With this, you know, Qi Zhou Wing Chun or push hands like in Tai Chi or, or, or Yi Quan. Those are kind of handy because you want to read his direction of the force. For example, I block him here. If he's going to go back, I want to know and then get ready for his next move. If, if he steps here and he wants to push through, I also know that I can you know, slightly move to the side. That's the second, how you feel his force is important. Also, if he's hit and he put back, I know I can't grab it, so I'm ready for, 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 for the next one. But if he hit and I feel there's a solid connection, they're grabbing eagerly, right? You have to make this judgment on the fly without really having to think about it. So now let's look at it again. Because uh, you've got, you got to watch out for these things. And then you hit him, right? Keep hitting him, and then hit him, and then wire the knife. It's about starting the initial two or three blows, find the right opportunity, then go in and hit the hit all, all, all of it. And then once you see uh, getting enough damage, then why about take the knife away? And then once you take the knife away, important, put him down. Don't let don't let him hand it. Okay, you don't want him to, you know, you go around and he comes back up and you know do something else to, to you. Always take the knife away once the guy is uh, is down, and then Make sure you put him down if he's not falling by himself, right? Trip him, do whatever. And then once he's down, hit him some more. Okay, it's might not be legal in some countries, but for your own safety, make sure the guy's out. And also, unless you're in, in, in immediate danger, if not in a very shady place, search, search him. Take his keys, his wallet, everything, throw them away, and then go. So that he will have a hard time to chase after you. That's very important, right? To deal with it after he, he's put down. And that's the one thing. Next, people have different uh, approaches, right? Some people, they, they want to play like, like, like a boxing game, right? They want to you know, fake, fake it and do, do stuff like that. When people do that, don't rush in. Because you might just be fainted by a fake move and the real one comes as you go in. So when that happens, you have to, 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 to make sure you play the game too. And try to find the right opportunity to enter. Whereas some other time you might have encountered people who, who are not very, who don't think too much. They just want to come and kill you, right? In people like, like that, it's much easier to read the movement so that you can take it <coughs> in, the, in the back of the head or wherever it, it, it lands. Most importantly, no matter how you deal with the hand, always immediately take the attention to his face, all right? Only when he's damaged, then worry about the finishing move. For example, if my hand is on the other side, I can you know, lock him up, knee him, <coughs> the back of the head, elbow, the back of the head, and then you know, take the knife. Or if, uh, you know, if the hand is on the other side, okay, lock, it, lock it in as you hit him. Only when, when you feel he's not responding so well anymore, you know, then you can trip, trip him, or, you know, or take the arm, bend it over, or do, do whatever, it doesn't matter at that point. But importantly, it's the punches. Right? If, I hold his, if, you, if you trap him down here, still trying to deal with the arm, hit him. If this arm not going through, try and hit him with that, that arm. Just hit him. Right? And also to trap the arm if you can. Not always easy, right? but trap him better than grabbing. If you're grabbing, you know, it's, it, it can be messy if you're not in the right place. But if the arm is already trapped here, it's harder for him to, to let go. As long as you hold here, you can start hitting him, kneeing him, do all, all kinds of stuff. Even, even, you can even bite him if you really need to, if you feel like he's threatened. The point is, as long as it's hard here, you're safe to resume your attack. So whenever you can, try to trap his arm. But don't just go and say, I'm going to trap in the beginning, because you might get killed. Right? Always deal with it to the head first. When he's, when he's slowing down, when you're getting a feel of, of his moves, then you trap it and you start hitting him again. Or hit, hit, him, hit, him, hit him, and then no worry about the knife. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is there are also scenarios where people are very forceful. They're going to 
you know, they're not do this. They're gonna push into you and stab. Right? And that's also quite difficult to deal with. The most important thing there is you don't want to receive his peer pressure. If he pushes in and you find him back, that is exactly what he wants. He will stab you, and because you are dealing with so much over overwhelming force, you might not be able to defend against it. Alright? So let's start from here. So if he's forcefully pushing into to it, you have to step back just enough to offset his push. And then look for the opportunity. Okay, you can stop and just uh, force it into that. Okay, and then try to hit him in the face. Sorry. So you have to move away from him just enough so that he's not you know, you're not receiving all that pressure to cause yourself to lose balance. Okay? Like right again. Uh, you can reach your first further with it. Yeah. You want, you want to hit hit, right? You want to, you know, you want to get away from him and then hit hit, hit hit in the face. Obviously, it's a more the dangerous situation, more difficult to deal with. But when you are in that situation and you don't know, like in some cases where he's hand in hand, you can't really see the knife, right? Basically, you hit him. Because then at least you won't be stabbed five, six times. But obviously, if you can't see it, always defend it. But if you really, really can't, focus here more. And hopefully, you are faster than him and you can stop him from causing serious damage. Another thing is, if he hands up this way, all you do is hamper. Right? If he is solid here, you hold it as he, as he comes into it, right? Boom, you're hit him. Right? But it's not like that, it's just that the regular closing, like some people they, they do they do it like this, you know. A closer. But then you have to step back. And you know, have your hand in front, keep doing, putting in there. And then step around him, right? Step around him, always always never move straight line. Never move in a straight line with him. Always try to step slightly out so that it's more difficult for him to come in to what to apply pressure to you. Never step directly back if you can. And uh, never go against him, okay? Like a smaller one, right? You don't want to go like this, because you will get that. And people are gonna some people they kill hand out more like so they want to stab you like that. That would be the same as the previous one, deal with the hand. So as it comes with it, right, then don't, don't let the hand get to you. And then when this one comes repeatedly stabbing, you can deal with that. And you hit it. Alright? So this is a general idea of how I personally approach it now to this. And uh, keep in mind that these concepts are not magic, okay? You can't just look at it and think, oh, I understand that you can do it, no. You got to practice. You have to have a lot of practice to reflex and you hand up one later and you can see his knife coming and you can block them, knowing where they are, and react with accordingly. Right? Always be able to hit him and block the knife at the same time. Only then you are ready. And you have to have a good training partner. You start with slow, you have to draw it, then speed up. Eventually, you want to be able to press in simulation of real life speed, right? And then, you might still not be 100% ready for real life. So, that's how difficult uh, not in this. And I think a lot of people don't really talk about that. Because they just want to get money from the seminars. But the truth is, handling a knife is very hard. You need to put in extra training and still have mental preparation that you might be hurt. But if it's a situation that you cannot escape and you cannot avoid, then you have to gamble, right? It's better to get a few scratch and you take the guy out than he's stabbing you with five holes and you end up dead. Alright, so keep in mind, not defense, and it's a lost resort. But it's always safe to have it under your belt. So if when the unfortunate enough it happens, you at least are prepared for it. Alright? Thanks for watching. 
Subscribe to the channel if you like our videos, and see you in the near future. Bye-bye.